Aloha everyone. This is June 4th and 5th from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. In this episode, lava makes ocean entry in Kapoho. Overnight, lava made ocean entry into the Bay of Kapoho. When morning came, this thick billow of steam rising from the ocean was seen far and wide. Travis Sanders was in Kapoho that morning, documenting what he saw on the ground. And that's the footage you see here. Oh no. Now this footage is really rough for anybody that's familiar with the area or cared about the area to see. It's the destruction of a very special place for many people. The bay is being overwhelmed with lava and people trying to document it are left with few options to be able to do so. Travis just so happens to be one of the very, very few people on the ground that are documenting all this. Now there's something to be said for guys like Travis that are going out of their way to provide information in real time or as best as they can about the ongoing events on the ground. Prior to the eruption, Kaboho had a very diverse ecosystem with many different types of plant and animal life, including different kinds of turtles and different types of tropical fish. Now these same life forms would be decimated when the lava came into that same area and made it ocean entry in Kapoho Bay. Turtles used to hang out around tide pools, were cooked in their shells. And there is video of this, but I'm not gonna show it here. It is heartbreaking to see, and there is going to be fish floating around the ocean entry, dead for weeks to come. Without much question, June 4th becomes the most destructive day of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Over 100 homes will go up in less than 24 hours as the ocean entry continues to intrude into the bay and spread along the flanks. The coastal area is very densely populated. The homes in Vacation Land and Kapoho Beach lots are on small parcels. And that makes for a scene where one home falls and then another and then another in rapid succession. All this black smoke you see mixed in with the white indicates another home going up. And soon after that one goes out, the next one is enveloped. Now it's hard to think of what to say here. We're just looking at just brazen destruction. And it's kind of like a giant eraser is just removing a community from the map in front of our eyes. The place in which lava precisely made ocean entry, even though the flow was quite wide, isn't the most densely populated place in Kapoho. Those lie to the north and to the south, but the lava flows expanding rather rapidly in both of those directions, but more so to the south at this point in time. To the north, it's working its way along the coastline and through the community and through the farm lots simultaneously. On the coastline, it's now connecting with the lava flow from the 1960 eruption that runs along the coast, while to the south, it's starting to rapidly take Alapai Point, as well as starting to wrap around, split from the, this ocean entry, and go towards vacation land in the background. Here we have a thermal map provided by the USGS, which shows Fisher 8 still active in a lava channel feeding seven miles into Kapoho Bay. But just up slope of the ocean entry at back at the Kapoho Crater, we see that there's a rather large breakout that's going to the south of the Kapoho Crater and wrapping around it. We have a few glimpses from Mick Calber and his overflight of this breakout the morning of June 4th. So I want to take a little bit of time to highlight the Homes Lost map that Hawaii Tracker and the community have been collaborating on over the previous couple weeks. And this is the map that has been generated from all that labor. It shows the homes that have been lost across the eruption and it also overlays the USGS lava flow layer. So you can see where these homes were on the map. Each one of these red dots represents a home that has been lost. At this point in the eruption, the official count from civil defense in the county is that there's 158 homes destroyed. And our map and the community crowdsourcing of information has it at 
275 homes have been lost at this point by June 4th, and more are gonna be coming by June 5th. So the county is lagging behind the real time flow of data from the ground. This was the scene that greeted us the morning of June 5th. Most of Kapoho, especially on the south side of the initial ocean entry, is gone, including almost all of vacation land. There's only a few homes left and we can see those homes being consumed as Mick Calvert is taking his morning overflight. This ocean entry is now very wide. It is only getting wider as well. This shot is from out on the boat in the Bay of Capoho looking back at the ocean entry. We see this thick wall of steam. It makes it really difficult to do any kind of damage assessment to figure out what was lost from out on the water but the damage has been done. The home's loss count that was at 270 unofficially the previous day before June 4th and the lava went in there is now over 460. Yeah. First thing get into Puiki and this dog will show up right to our boat. June 5th also has a Kaika Marzo and a bunch of residents making a voyage from Hilo on Kaika's boat all the way around the easternmost side of the island and then back down to the now isolated Poiki. When they get there, there is a dog that is lost and wants out of there quickly. This dog is then taken with them and rescued from the isolated area. The dog ends up being named Merlin. And it's just one of those small stories about the impact of animal life that often get glossed over in many of the documentaries that I've seen thus far. Here we get our first shot of the breakout that had happened the previous day on the Malka side of the Kapoho Crater. And by this point, it had joined back into the original flow front completely encircling the Kapoho Crater, turning it into a little kipuka. Back up slope at the eruptive vent of Fisher 8, we see that the fissure is continuing to put down just a tremendous amount of lava, almost entirely unabated, and doesn't show any real signs of diminishing or resetting. One of the fears that we've had over the previous week since Fissure 8 took up its reign was that the fissures would reset, continue to propagate up the rift zone, and lava flows would continue back in Leilani Estates. But that doesn't seem to be the case of what's happening. This is the June 5th thermal map produced by the USGS, which shows the lava flows coming down from Fisher 8 for a couple miles in a very large channel before splitting off into a braided channel and then conjoining back together before then splitting again behind the Kapoho crater and reconjoining on the eastern side where the lava flow has been pushing even further to the south and continuing to make ocean entry. We end June 5th back up at the Kilauea Caldera, where the collapse events are continuing on a fairly regular interval, which is kind of rare and unusual for earthquakes to be as predictable as these are. Even though they're not technically earthquakes, they're generating the force of a magnitude 5.3 with each collapse. And the force is very strong locally inside the National Park, as well as the Volcano Village. This footage is taken from the Jagger Museum, which many people that have visited the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park would be familiar with. That'll do it for June 4th and 5th from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. There was a lot going on in these couple of days. I hope that this video kind of captures some of the insanity that this time period represents for many people in Kapoho. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Aloha.